I've got the keys to a 1964 356C Cabriolet, and I get to drive it. So come with me as we drive the last of the 356s. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Ah, the 356, the first Porsche. I was going to open this video with some original words about the first Porsche, but PCA's model guide, written by PCA tech expert David Seelan, does it better than I could in the first paragraph. The 356 was built from 1948 to 1965 in six major types. The Gamun 356, the Pre-A 356, the 356A, 356B, and 356C. To the eyes of a non-enthusiast, they are nearly indistinguishable. All have a striking resemblance to an upside-down bathtub. Water-cooled Porsches of any model have little in common with the 356 other than the Porsche script font and, depending on the model, a horizontally opposed engine behind the driver. Initially, the 356 shared many parts with the contemporary air-cooled Volkswagen Beetle, but had a completely unique body structure with a more aerodynamic shape and more powerful engine. If you want to learn more about the 356, search for a 356 model guide in PCA.org's news section or click the info card that popped up in the right hand corner of your screen. This particular 356 is a 1964 model, a 356C. You might recall in 2022, Damon drove a 1964 356SC Cabriolet that was fully restored at some point. An SC, often referred to as a Super, has a 1600cc, 95 horsepower, air-cooled flat four, and was the highest performing 356 short of stepping up to a 4-cam Carrera. The 356 model we're driving today is referred to as a normal, a C Cabriolet with a 1600cc, 75 horsepower flat four, and is completely original. After a quick look at the Mart, we see most street 1964 356s tend to hover in the range of $60,000 to $150,000 depending on the model and condition. This one recently sold for about $160,000. In this drive, we're excited to find out how the two 1964 356s we've driven compare, even though they're in essence almost exactly the same car. A few things they do have in common, a four-wheel disc brake system, a handsome interior with a convertible top and a four-speed manual transmission. In a show of its VW roots, the 356 has torsion bar suspension with a swing axle at the rear, which under hard braking or driving over a crest can swing into a positive camber and create a dicey handling situation. Even at its most refined, a 356 wears its rear engine handling characteristics on its sleeve. All right, here we are inside of a 1964 356C, the last of the 356s. And also the most refined, as people say. Uh, the uh, car is 75 horsepower. The C had four-wheel disc brake. So it was a uh, big improvement over top the, uh, the B, which was probably the most popular of the whole uh, 356 lineup. It is typical 356, three gauges, tachometer right in the uh, middle, uh, key to the left, it's a uh, flat four. It is, uh, it, it is why Porsche became famous. And this is a Cabriolet. Uh, we're doing part of the drive with the top up and part of it with the top down. Uh, these cars are probably best experienced with the top down without a doubt. They are uh, purest form of driving, I think, when it comes to Porsches. Uh, there's no, uh, no PSM, no ABS, no power steering. This is strictly a... Uh, pure raw car so let's uh give it a little bit of gas oh starts right up that's a good sign this car has been sitting for an hour or so while we're doing some photographs so that's a uh well-tuned car we're gonna take the handbrake uh, so for those of you who wonder how you can tell a uh, replica from a uh real one the replicas usually have the beetle chassis which means the handbrakes in the middle the real ones have the handbrake under the dash this doesn't have a right side mirror but it really doesn't need it because it is uh, such a tiny car it's a big steering wheel because it doesn't have power steering it makes it easier to handle it's a four-speed transmission It 
uh, the sound of the flat four, it, it just makes you smile. Not quite, doesn't sound like a beetle, although it has that same type of iconic sound of that four banger going. They also had a 90 horsepower version of this car, uh, which was the uh, Supers. This is the, uh, you want to call it the base model of the 75, which was really a, a lot of horsepower back then. I'm hovering around uh, 3,500 RPM. Seems to be like a sweet spot. A lot of grunt, a lot of instant torque. Brakes are very good. They're not uh, they're not big reds, but we're not also uh, going uh, all that fast. But I really appreciate the C. I think you have to drive uh, an even old, earlier version, an A, and you see how much refined they became. Just over 10 years, it was uh, quite a stark difference <clears throat> from having uh, much less horsepower, a uh, four-wheel drum brakes. Uh, the, free, this, the C was such a, an improvement. And it was also the end of the line. They were getting to... Uh, ready to debut the 911. In fact, by the time this was being built, the 911 was debuting in Frankfurt. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, much like whenever any new model comes out, a lot of people uh, didn't like the fact that the 911 was that much bigger, that it was going to a six cylinder, not the beloved four cylinder. People had gotten used to the little four banger, the 1600 CC engine. This is a, a lot, this takes the corner so well. Give you an idea, I'm doing about 4,500 RPM. Plenty of power on tap. Brakes take about, uh, i say a little bit of pedal travel to engage, but that's normal on this car. But if you're trying to compare it to a modern Porsche, uh, it's something that you'll probably have to get used to. I guess with my 914, it's not that uh, big of a uh, deal for me. I'm just giving it a full acceleration here. All right, so they've uh, taken the top, top down for me because this is really the essence, I think, of a 356. It's open, open top drop, drop top driving. Uh, the first 356 was a convertible. Let's not forget that. So let's see if we can, here we go. Ah, uh, the engine sounds so much better with the top down. It is, uh, wow, <laughs> right behind you. It's uh, a glorious sound. It echoes off these walls so well. With 75 horsepower, I gotta tell you, it's more than enough for a, uh, a road like this. It's a narrow road, but this is a narrow car. See if we can wind it up through the gears a little bit. Yep, it uh, has a decent amount of torque. The steering is all manual. Um, it has a little bit thicker, uh, wider tires and wider wheels. So the steering is a little heavier than a, uh, if you will, a stock C, but not by much. You don't need to be uh, doing uh, upper body workout to drive it. It's a uh, still very light steering, but very uh, communicative. You can feel the road very well. There's no play in it. 
once again for a car that's almost 60 years old wow i wish i was aging as well as this car did i think my, a lot of the car is original except for the uh, paint and you can't help but think back what this car must have looked like on the road with all the other cars out there during 1964 such a uh, tiny little car but it's so potent and I love these short dashboards it isn't like the dashboards of today that you can barely reach the far corner of it with your hand uh, here the windshield is right in front of you you feel like uh, uh, there's not even a windshield there I gotta tell you it's a beautiful day it's not too hot sun's out but this road is uh, shaded nicely it's like almost made for this car if you want to if you want analog driving this is it and like I said the sea is very refined it is uh, probably one of the most popular 356s they get because of the fact that it's so refined. All right. Well, that was one fun drive. So we want to give a shout out to At Speed Motors, Bob Miller, who's appeared in many of our videos for uh, letting us use this car for our one mile review. Um, they are actually selling this car. So it's going to have a new lucky owner by the time this video comes out. And someone who's buying at the right time to enjoy the summer weather in a uh, Porsche convertible. So let's look at the ratings. Uh, what we call the uh, car show or the cars and coffee rating. Um, 356 Cabriolet. They usually get up a lot of attention at any car show. Um, although I was told once that uh, the best way to show a Cabriolet is with the top up. Because people will actually stop to look inside the car versus the, with the top down but boy it does look good with the top down so anyways i would give the uh, car show it's a stunner uh, there's not that many that were made in black you would think black would be the most common color but there wasn't a whole, whole lot that were made in black um, i would give it an eight maybe yeah let's go let's give it an eight for car show um uh what the heck eight eight and a half let's do eight and a half that's the thing that's because I know if I saw this at a uh, Cars and Coffee or a car show, uh, I would be drawn to it. Um, as far as a uh, road trip, I would say um, it depends on where you're going and how long you're going to be driving. Uh, storage space. This does have a lot of storage space. It has the front trunk. has behind the seats. Um, it doesn't have air conditioning. So you will be going back to the 60s. And depending what your passenger is like, they may not want to uh, go back to the 60s and want, uh, want some uh, creature comforts. Um, it is, uh, it, it is a, a car that will go well on the highway, but it's probably more fun on the back roads. Um, so for cruising, long uh, extended cruising, it's something you have to be prepared that you are driving a 60-year-old car. So I would say for a road trip, uh, probably a 7 I would say seven realistically um i know my my uh, my wife would not be a big uh, uh supporter of going on a long road trip with this um daily drive uh i guess if you lived a few miles from your office uh maybe a daily driver uh, let's face it um these cars uh it, it scares me to drive my uh, my 914 and i can only imagine this car uh on the streets especially every day because you have a lot of distracted drivers the tail lights on this car are very low they're not high up like modern cars are and uh my fear it wouldn't be so much driving it every day would be the issue it would be the fear of it being rear-ended by a careless driver uh, that you may not find on a club tour or a uh, weekend drive on the country roads as you would in day-to-day -day gridlock type of traffic um, so for a uh, daily driver, I'd probably give it a six. Once again, the whole air conditioning thing goes into effect. It's a uh, six volt system uh, for electricity. So the headlights aren't the best. Um, I would, uh, uh, the adventurous side of me says I would love to daily drive this. 
Uh, but the realistic side of me says uh, it would probably start to get old after a while. Now the fun factor. Fun factor is an easy nine on this car. Um, it's everything so visceral. You hear, you hear the, the motor so well. You, you feel the road. It's, uh, it doesn't take much to scare you, if you will. You start going in the corners and you know you have nothing to save you uh, except your, your talent. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with this car. And there's nothing, uh, to me, as much fun as driving an underpowered car um, and making a momentum car, learning really to drive. So, uh, anyways, that's my ratings. Um, if you get to drive a chance to drive a 356, especially a C, take it, up, take it up, take that chance. They're great cars to drive and to learn about Porsche history. And you realize what uh, why Porsche is where, where they are. It's because of a, this car here, the 356, is what's uh, made Porsche so famous. Uh, both in competition and the street if you like our videos uh, hit the like button we'd love for you to subscribe and of course leave a comment i'm sure you 56 owners will have a word to say um i'm hoping they drop that in price so i can afford one because i love these cars but until then i will drive any one of any car one's car i get a chance to till next time see you then